anyway, next story. Um, so the, the, the ongoing dinner gate scandal where Suga's son, uh, this fine looking human being, that's the prime minister's son, he's nothing wrong with the way that he looks. Um, you know, but <laughs> I wish she knew what they were doing when they were put that when they put that photo up of uh, the prime minister's son. But yes, this is the guy who um, now the 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 pre company president of his company has resigned. Eleven uh, bureaucrats have been reprimanded. Uh, the minister has uh, given up like a uh, had to return a bunch of pay. Um, and not only that, the funniest thing about this is that the. Um, at the same time, the farm ministry thought there was a good opportunity. The farm ministry, you might recall, they, they had the, the scandal recently where the minister had to resign for taking a bribe uh, for saying that Japan wouldn't uh, adopt safety standards for farming. Um, and it turned out that other people in the farm ministry were also being taken out to meals and, uh, you know, uh, illegally, uh, um, uh, unethically being entertained uh, by companies that were lobbying for uh, favors. So, um, yeah, they took the opportunity while the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications was going through this huge firestorm. They kind of thought, OK, yeah, we're going to raise our hand and take it now, too. This is kind of what happens when these things come out. It's sort of like everyone comes forward so that there's sort of safety in numbers. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, it doesn't look as bad, perhaps, or it seemed like good timing, perhaps, for them to come forward. So, yeah, they're getting reprimanded in the farm ministry. And, and the thing about this is, is that it's kind of depressing in the sense that in the 90s and 80s, I, up until the 80s and, and into the 90s, Japan was really the money politics thing. If you ever look up the Kakui Tanaka uh, Lockheed scandal or you hear about that, that was just quintessential how the, the post-war Japanese democratic politics structure was just so set up on money politics. It was set up on money for favors. I mean, to an extent, the same way as it, it is everywhere else. But it was particularly cynical in Japan. It was actually backed with U.S. government money, if you actually look into it, because there was genuine concern that the communists and socialists might actually win in Japan, and Japan might actually pivot from being pro-U.S. to being pro-North Korea and Russia. And so the U.S. actually um, kind of uh, um, did a did the democracy thing, but but with a, a few favors. They actually set it up, um, and they actually paid money uh, to that. Uh, they set up the money politics system, or they supported it. And they allowed it to happen, which uh, went right up until, you know, famous scandals where uh, even the prime minister directly took bribes in exchange for U.S. defense contracts and, and whatnot. And, um, you know, this kind of culture really, really was entrenched. The multi-generational politicians, um, frequent, you know, routine scandals about, uh, you know, entertainment, about favors and le leaking information from regulators to businesses to stop them getting caught on stuff. Um, and this really kind of came to a peak where, first of all, in 1995, when the LDP lost for the first time in 50 years, uh, where basically people just couldn't take it anymore and they kicked the government out. Ironically, the government that took over from them in the 90s, uh, also they had a, a bunch of prime ministers resign for corruption, for having taken uh, bribes in the past and whatever. And, and people just went back to the LDP. But, um, you know, this sort of thing got pretty much stamped out. But the, the last hurrah of money politics, of this kind of whining and dining and bribing for favors and whatnot, that was really deeply entrenched in Japanese politics, and obviously still is, but has come somewhat under control. Most of these laws that are being used to punish these bureaucrats now, the ethics law and the penal code, specifically introduced uh, provisions against uh, bribing or uh, uh, excessive entertainment for politicians where you they would make both the entertainers and the entertainees subject to uh, criminal prosecution and uh, you know discipline if you're a bureaucrat uh, firing and, and other forms of punishment if you uh, accepted such entertainment but the, the straw that broke the uh, the camel's back as it were happened in 1998 I believe um, they talk about the, the 1998, the worst ethics row since 1998, uh, highlights government hubris. This is from the Nikkei Shimbun. What I love, this is talking about my favorite scandal of all time. If you're a long time watcher of the show, you know what my favorite scandal of all time is. And it actually, the, my favorite scandal of all time came up um, actually again today, the, the, the echoes of it. If you live in Japan and you use Mizuho Bank, you may have noticed that all the, uh, not all of them, but apparently a large number of ATM machines and uh, internet banking was down today and not working. Uh, people were not able to take out cash or do banking transactions. And this was uh, the top story on the news. Um, and and all, the, all these people talking about the massive inconvenience that it was causing. This is kind of related to this 1998 scandal. And the 1998 scandal, my favorite scandal of all time, involves um, 
the, the, the collapse of the Japanese banking system in the 1980s. It happened mainly because um, Japanese, all these many, many banks that existed in Japan had been able to, uh, they, they all had bad debts. They all had debts, loans that they'd given out to people that were not being paid back at all and were aggregating uh, in amounts that were exceeding the uh, cash holdings of these banks. So, you know, the, the, they were basically threatening to sink the entire Japanese economy. And with the bursting of the bubble, these became uh, the worst uh, these became a, a, that sort of worsened the situation. There were more people unable to uh, to, to pay back their loans, and uh, this was happening sort of even spread across all these banks. And it was building up, and people knew it was bad. But of course, the um, the finance agency was going around doing part of their role is to do spot checks on banks to check their liquidity, to check that they have enough cash on hands to be able to handle you know withdrawals and whatnot. And uh, it turned out that the inspectors for the finance for, that were doing the spot inspections for the banks coming and checking their books and checking that they had enough cash on hand to be able to keep running, um, they uh, let all the banks know that they were open to being persuaded to let banks know in advance when their surprise inspections were going to come in so that they could manage the books uh, in such a way that they could present themselves as looking solvent. Um, and this basically uh, because they were effectively they asked to be bribed uh, by the banks or they asked for entertainment for the banks for years and years which continued and it basically allowed these banks that were already in trouble and would have been called out as being in trouble and could have gotten help and could have recovered if this had had been caught early in the 90s but it went all the way through to 1998 before they got caught. Um, basically because the banks collapsed just because of the, the debts became so enormous they just became this huge wave that just came over and it crushed the entire banking system in Japan caused the entire system to effectively collapse and the government basically forced all of these banks to merge together um, to put to sort of pile assets together and sell all their uh, land holdings and whatnot and they forced all of these banks to merge uh, just because the entire system was basically on the brink of bringing down the entire country so uh, what was the? Uh, it wasn't actually a bribe that was used to get the information on when these spot inspections were coming. It was being taken out to dinner, um, but, and apparently the bank inspectors had a particular type of restaurant that they liked. They like they really like shabu shabu, and apparently they knew this lovely um, shabu shabu place in uh, Shinjuku, specifically eastern Shinjuku, um, a neighborhood called Kabukisho. You may have heard of it. Apparently the shabu shabu they they use great meat. They cook it very very well. They boil it delicately so it melts in your mouth. Apparently it was very, very good shabu shabu, um, but, you know, uh, and it was probably for the shabu shabu and not so much for the fact that the waitresses didn't wear underwear and the floors had mirrors all over them. Uh, that was the main reason that um, they wanted to go to the specific restaurant and that they were willing to spill the information on when the upcoming surprise inspections were coming, uh, which led to the collapse of the entire Japanese banking system. So, you know, when they talk about the worst ethics trust since 1998, they managed to go through the whole story without ever saying the word no pants shabu shabu. Which, which is what nearly caused the collapse of the Japanese economy. Um, uh, by all accounts, um, this guy was not taking uh, his friends from the Ministry uh, of Communications <laughs> uh, out to no pants shabu shabu, no pants shabu shabu restaurants, but uh, he was taking them out to dinners costing up to $700 uh, per head. And um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was basically harking back to, to, to the old days of uh, people paying favors to bureaucrats which they are basically give, taking them out for dinners and benefits that they'd never be able to afford on their own salaries and whatnot and uh yeah yeah it's ba and the repercussions the firings and the people uh, quitting and whatnot and being fired and uh, ministers resigning and handing over pay uh company presidents resigning um this is all just because this guy the president's son took uh, the president's the prime minister's son took them out to dinner uh, uh multiple times you know excessively and charged it to the company so this is the worst scandal since 1998, although, you know, progress, they all, all the waitresses apparently, well, most of them, at least, at least as far as we know, they were all, they all had pants on at the time that the food was being served. So, you know, I mean, baby steps, Japan, I suppose, is making progress in some ways. Um, but yes, the other thing, of course, is that Suga, uh, he, of course, uh, wanted to call a pre he, he, he he's not a good, he, Suga's obviously not a very charismatic person. And, you know, that's fine. I thought, well... Okay, so he's not charismatic, but obviously he's a technocrat. He's walked, worked his way up through the LDP to become prime minister. So he must be smart. He must be good at, you know, something. Uh, it turns out he's definitely not good at press conferences. He he called a press conference. Um, it, it came on at 7 p.m. when the NHK News comes on, on like Thursday, I think it was, to announce the lifting of the state of emergency in six prefectures. 
and um, he called this press conference himself, and it was sort of standing in the lobby of the um, uh, 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 of the PM's residence. And um, basically, of course, of course, the press said, "Hey, what about your son? You know, what about that?" And uh, he he basically became uh, pretty pretty. It was awful. I like to watch him. He it was like a, a, a one of those really bad sort of Trump press conferences where he turns around and he's basically just uh, dodging and sniping and saying, well, you know, that's a that's a relevant question. I refuse to. I, he practically called them fake news, <laughs> and he started attacking the press for asking him certain questions. Like he was offended that they were asking him questions, which of course they're going to ask. Um, so it's basically like it was so bad and it's funny NHK hasn't talked much about it but a lot of blogs have talked about like he he, he basically like when the thing is when you're watching a press conference like that uh, the the audience feels like they are the camera right the camera is our eyes and so when you've got a, a, a prime minister who's really annoyed at the journalists and the questions being asked and is basically attacking them back for asking him impudent questions he's doing that at the camera which makes people feel like the prime minister's attacking them and it was just awful it was really bad so yeah honestly i i actually think that maybe suga is not long for this i mean he's doing this so badly like his poll numbers are probably going to be awful after this so yeah they had their pants on but um that's about the only positive coming out of this at the moment and the idea that um sure we took them out to some dinners and it all could have been good if they hadn't denied it and they hadn't made people dig more into it but now that hold is getting deep and everyone as usual is handling it and only in ways that only make it worse and seriously i i, I think this could actually well if not be the sole factor that brings down sugar uh, it could lead to his popularity going so low that there could be a I think there could be a challenge uh, that maybe some people are thinking that they want to be prime minister are going to start uh, preparing for that. So, yeah, it's been an interesting week with the, uh, we'll call it Dinnergate. Um, no information on pants related to this at the moment. So, um, yeah, yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. But, oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't actually explain before, um, postscript. The way that the banking thing collapsing right now is that uh, Mizuho was not a happy merger. The point is that Mizuho was the result, as all the big banks, uh, you know, Mitsubishi, UFJ, Sumitomo, Mitsui, um, and Mizuho. These were unhappy. These were basically shotgun weddings of all of these banks. These were formed uh, while these banks absolutely hated and resented each other. And, and, and the amount of internal feuding in Mizuho is legendary, particularly among the system departments. And it's their complete uh, sabotaging of the legacy comp bank company IT department, still being unable to agree, still fighting with each other, that continues to cause these system issues. That means that even like uh, something like nearly 20 years after Mizuho was like created in the sort of shotgun wedding by the government, um, they still have not been able to get a unified banking system, single banking system for that bank together, just because the internal teams are still uh, refusing to cooperate. It's just uh, crazy. That in itself should be a movie i've mentioned that before as well but yeah